In all my years playing this game, I have come up with one or two very successful tactics. But this one, the asymmetric 41221, is probably the most successful tactic that I have ever produced. And today we're going to show you how it works and why it works, and why it is probably the only tactic that you will ever need. Let's go and kick some balls. Hello and welcome back to FM23 with Old Man Phil and today we are going to be taking a look at this what I think is the most unstoppable tactic that I have ever developed and has culminated this season at Benfica with a clean sweep of every trophy including the Champions League and we have achieved this after just three seasons with Benfica. And it's not just been Benfica. Every other team that I have managed in FM23 have taken to this tactic and it has been so, so successful to the extent that it is the only tactic I will consider using now when I begin a new save. But before we go into why it works and how it works and what kind of players you need to set this up, if you are brand new to the channel and you like FM content and you particularly like to see people suffer playing the game, then you're in the right place. So why not? Subscribe, like, watch, comment, help the channel to grow and help us to support the very worthwhile cause that you can see scrolling up above. This channel is committed to donating all ad revenue to the British Heart Foundation. And before we actually go into showing you exactly what it looks like on the pitch, let's have a quick look at the philosophy behind how it works. If we go to our tactics screen, you can see that it is an asymmetric, almost an asymmetric 442. If you put a 4231 and a 442 together and then squeeze them in the middle, this might be something that pops out at the end of that process. And it is very, very effective because it creates oceans of space down this right hand side and although there are only two players who have an attack duty it is very very attacking in the way that it works out even though we only approach each game with a positive mentality and how it works is when we create this space down the right hand side there are two things that can happen now we can either use that space by passing to players who are in that space or what often happens as well is once the defense starts spreading themselves across to cover the space that has been opened up, you'll see our players actually switch it back to the left and create overloads on the left, which then means that we have opportunities to score goals from the left. It is a complete tactic and defenses are having real problems working out how to deal with it. There are two systems, one of them is a high press and one of them is a low block. And we'll go through why we would use each of those later on. But first, let's just have a look at some of the goals that we've scored. So first, let's have a look at a game that we played against Porto, who probably, in my opinion, are the best team in the league. They certainly have the best players, but we absolutely dispatched them by four goals to nil. OK, and this is the first goal. And if we now pause it there, what you can see is we already have a three on two and we've moved the ball across from the left. And now we have an overload on the right hand side. Let's move it forward. Oceans of space has opened up in this area here. If Endrick picks the right pass, we're in. And he does that. Ruan Carlos is in acres of space. He pulls the ball back. It's a lucky goal in the end. But we had so many numbers in the penalty area, we had to score. If we look at this goal coming up, then you'll see again, we're starting down the left-hand side. It's going to be switched. And it comes out to Samu this time. Instead of going for the overload on the right-hand side, for the space on the right-hand side, he makes the decision to cut it back. And now we have, again, players in space in the penalty areas from the left. And Zolis hits the post, but Endrick puts, up, puts in from the follow-up. We've won the ball, and already you can see that we are creating huge amounts of space 
down this right hand side. If Palacios picks out the right pass, which he does, we are now in. We have now got a two on two in the middle and it looks like easy to score. And Zolis does just that. And so it's very, very effective. And we can use both sides of the pitch, the left and right, to create attacks. Just one more time, let's have a look at a game in the Champions League. We played against Dortmund, having lost in the first leg two goals to nil away. We then hammered them at home by six goals to nil. And again, if we stop it here, it begins, as usual, on the left-hand side. And if we move it then forward, it's going to be switched. Actually, Samu plays it down the left to Endrick. If you look now, if we zoom out, we have a three on two on the right hand side already and we're going to take advantage of that they don't have enough players back to cover and we have gone one nil up but again here is the type of goal we score again if we zoom out we have a two on one down the right hand side and the correct ball will open up the opposition from here turns finds perkins perkins now has acres of room into Endrick, he switched it now back to the left as they were drifting across, he switched it back to the left. But here we have another example where we have the two midfielders very close together supporting each other. Nice ball, it's one. If we zoom out again, we have a two on one and acres of space to move into on the right hand side. Move it forward and this time it goes, he plays back to the left hand side and Endrick scores and so that's pretty much how it works we can score goals from either side of the pitch we will also score a lot of goals from outside the penalty area it really is a nightmare for opposition defenses but the important thing is is that the team is built on defensive solidity and in the league last year we scored 94 goals but only conceded 16 and this this back four remains all through the game as a back four and we play with two full backs on support and that means that they don't wander very far they just hang around mostly around the halfway line they don't tend to go too far and they leave all the attacking to these boys in the attacking half of the pitch for a goalkeeper what we would want is a sweeper keeper on defend if he can distribute all well and good but it doesn't matter because all he needs to do is to pass to the boys in front of him we will also need two very good fullbacks and defensively good fullbacks these that we're playing are not attacking fullbacks they are trained basically to be defenders and therefore crossing and dribbling is not something that i really feel is necessary for this role they're not going to be bombing up and down the touch lines they're just going to be part of a very solid back four and so basically what they need is good physicals they need to be able to tackle and they need to be able to tight mark and i like to use a very tall fullback if i can get one if i can find a center back who can play as a right back like jules guard then that is a perfect perfect fullback for the instructions that we have for the fullback on the right we want him to cross from the byline not because we want him bombing up here to cross but we don't want him to cross from deep so we're going to try and discourage him from actually taking risks here and just find one of the two central midfielders we want him to run wide with the ball and then look for support and we want him to shoot less often stay wider tackle harder and mark tighter he's able to do these defensive things and so it's very important that we instruct him to do the tackle harder and mark tighter on the left we have a fullback we just have him shoot less often stay wider tackle harder and mark tighter his job is really just to support and to move into these positions so that he can support the players in front of him at center back on the right we have a central defender on defend he's just told to take fewer risks and tackle harder and we need players who can tackle harder in this position we have a ball playing defender on the left of the two central defenders and he's told to mark tighter so you will need someone who can do a marking job 
in this position. He's a ball playing defender so that he can carry the ball into these spaces, but not only carry the ball, you need someone who can also distribute the ball. And so that's why we have a ball playing defender here, someone who can run into the space here, but also can distribute the ball over the top. And then the most crucial role in the whole team, we have a DLP, a defensive midfielder on a support duty. And this is a support duty only for the high press. And the support duty allows him to just roam around. And a lot of the time he will find him up on this right hand side, supporting the two players on the right and utilizing the space that is created. But he can also drift into the left hand side and you'll often see him from positions here hitting long balls across the pitch to open up this right hand side as well he has kind of like because he's on a support duty he's kind of like a license to roam around a little bit and you'll also find he stays very close to his partner the central midfield on support the dlp on support he needs to be able to tackle he needs to be able to pass the ball and he needs to be able to tackle. And those are the key elements of this position. He also, if you can find one, needs to be able to mark players. We're going to mark the central midfield very tightly and both of these players need the ability to tackle and mark. He needs to have good vision, good passing and he needs to have good off the ball. He needs to be able to anticipate situations very well and make good decisions. His central midfield partner will be a central mid on support. He's told to take fewer risks, dribble less, shoot less often and tackle harder. Again, we want him to be able to tackle and win the ball. There are only two of them here, and so we want them to be able to win the ball in those areas of the pitch when it's necessary. On the right, we will have an inverted winger on support and he's told to take more risks. And basically, he's just going to sit there and he's going to sit kind of narrower in this area here. And he is going to be absolutely vital in creating the overloads in this area of the pitch. And often you'll see him getting to these areas and crossing the ball into the box. He's very, very vital. He won't always cut inside. He will sometimes and he will score from areas outside the penalty area. But more often than not, he's going to provide assists by supporting the shadow striker out here. We also then have the DLP coming up to this area and we have player overloads on this right hand side where there is this huge space. And then in front of him, we'll have a shadow striker. He will just be instructed to close down more. If you can find one who is very aggressive, he will be better than what we possibly have here. He will move into the channels and he'll he'll sit in here as well and he'll create all kinds of chaos in this area of the pitch. And then on the left hand side of the pitch, we will have an inside forward on support and he should have good finishing, should have good composure and he should also be able to pass the ball and have good technique. Having a long shot will also help. Like Gomes, he will score a lot of goals if you can find the right player. And this is actually a very key role because he needs to be a good player for when we switch the ball back to this side and he will be supported by the fullback and by the center mid and we can create chaos down this left hand side and then up top you can either use an advance forward or you can use a pressing forward both will work equally well and the advance forward and the pressing forward have no other instructions and so that's pretty much the player instructions and how we would set them up and the roles that we would give them and the jobs that they have to do now don't get me wrong this is not something that you can just put into a team and then you'll start winning every game it doesn't work like that in football manager anymore and you will have to work at it these boys will need to be trained the better the player obviously the less training they're going to need to adapt to this tactic but if you don't have the best team in the league then you're going to have to train them and it is going to take a little while for them to get used to how they're playing 
And so in the high press, we will start with a positive approach. If you are much the better team, then often I will start with an attacking approach. It is an attacking tactic, so why not attack teams who are inferior to you in terms of ability? In possession, we will play narrow. We will underlap on the left, play out of defense. Passing directness is shorter with a slightly higher tempo. We'll work the ball into the box and nothing else. That is it for our attack play. And in transition, we will counter press, we will counter attack, and we'll ask the goalkeeper to roll it out with no particular instruction. So he will just distribute it to the defense who will then play it out of defense. And out of possession, we play with a high press because obviously this is the high press tactic with a higher defensive line. Trigger press more often prevent short goalkeeper distribution, and the only other thing we will do is stop crosses. And that's it for the high press. And just a quick look at how the low block is different. Well, it's still a positive mentality, but in possession, we will just ask them to dribble less and we will be more disciplined. We've also taken out play out of defense. We don't want to be dilly-dallying at the back here. In transition, we will take off the counter press and we will still counter. Everything else will remains the same. And then, of course, out of possession it is a low block with a low block and higher defensive line. We reduce the trigger press to slightly more often. Prevent short goalkeeper distribution is removed. Everything else remains the same. There is one other little subtle change between the high press and the low block. When using the low block, I will tend to use the DLP on a defend duty, and this will mean that he'll hold his position in front of the back line. And I will use the low block for teams that we are not as good as. This served me extremely well in the Champions League, and we won the Champions League using the low block. In the league, I tended to use the high press tactic, except when we were playing teams who were equally as good as us, and then I reverted to the low block. I was able to change back to the high press if I felt it was necessary in game, and you can do that because you have the two tactics loaded. You can do that very quickly in game, just switch between one or the other. If you're holding on to a narrow lead, just switch it back to the low block. It's beautiful having these two systems that you can just switch between. Hand in hand with this is your opposition instructions, and just very quickly when I'm setting this up, I will normally close down the fullbacks, the defender right, defender left. I will trigger press on them, and then we'll show them onto the opposite foot. So in this case, the defender right will be on his left foot and the defender left will be on his right foot. If they are very, very pacey, I just tend not to press them and just go with the weaker foot. Defensive centers, I will leave alone, but sometimes if they have a weak link or they have a pivot working in the back three or back two, then I will ask my striker to tight mark or trigger press that particular individual. If the goalkeeper is very weak, I will oft often sometimes trigger press and show the goalkeeper onto his weaker foot. That's really decisions you have to make based on who you are playing. Wing backs will be the same. We will trigger press them if they're not too pacey and show them onto the inside foot. Bring them inside, which is generally their weaker foot. The midfield centrals, whether they be DMs or whether they be centre mids, if they are creative players, I will tight mark them. If they are very, very good creative players, tight mark them. And also we'll be looking for whether or not they have a weaker foot that we can show them onto. If they are not creative players, then I will just generally close them down. And that does the job just as well for players who don't have the ability to open up defenses. Wingers, I will generally just show onto their weaker foot and hard tackle if there is a case for hard tackling them. Sometimes I will tight mark them and sometimes I will close them down. If they've got no pace, then you might as well close them down. If they are 
very, very pacey, then I just generally tend to leave them alone. And if they are extremely pacey, then I will ask the fullback on that side as well to close down less often, just to stand off him and then stop the cross when he gets outside, or to stand off him and just lead him in here until somebody can tackle him, depending on whether he's an inside forward inverted winger or whether he's a natural winger. You have to make decisions based on this according to the team that you are playing. For their advanced midfielders, generally tight mark them and if there's a weaker foot, show them on their weaker foot. And for strikers, again, it really depends on how good they are at using the ball and if they are good ball carriers then I won't tight mark them if they're extremely tall I won't tight mark them I will look for a weaker foot and if it's possible to hard tackle them I tend to avoid using this tight marking or trigger pressing forwards unless I'm absolutely sure that my defenders are able to do the job and so that's it really. It is a very, very simple tactic, but it is probably one of the most successful tactics that I have ever come up with in my FM history. Try it out. See what you think, guys. And if you are new to the channel and you do like this kind of video, then let me know in the comments what kind of videos you like. And also, why not follow along? I will be using this system in a lot of my play along saves, and I will also be using it in the Burnley save which we do as a live stream on Tuesday and Thursdays at 8 p.m. In that save, we just slow everything down, take the game at a leisurely pace, and I'll go through match preparation and what I do in-game and try to help people to understand how your in-game instructions can affect the results that you get. Follow along with our new save that is beginning, which is going into the future, the Alex Ferguson save. And leave a like, even if you are not planning to follow us, leave a like and help the channel to grow and help us to support the very worthwhile cause that you can see scrolling up above. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you'll try it out and hopefully we will see some of you very, very soon.